Hello, welcome to Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and this is the introduction for part two of my massive book decluttering series. It's so echoey in here because none of my books are on my shelves so they're not, avoid in, uh, they're not absorbing sound. If you're wondering where you are, you're currently perched on my bookshelves like a beautiful, uh, I don't know, you're just smiling down on me uh, while I have this wonderfully aesthetic exercise bike in the background. Um, so what I've done since the last video is in the 20 minutes or so is have a cup of tea and alphabetise, which is one of my favourite things to do. Um, and I was thinking about how this video would work, uh, what would be interesting to see, uh, and I'm basically going to be setting up my shelves, but I want to show you them in a kind of reveal at the end. So I'm going to work backwards through the alphabet, working up my shelves, uh, making things fit, making things look reasonably nice, and while I go through that, I'm going to share some of my favourites with you. So all the bits in the middle will be sped up with me, stacking my shelves. I don't know what's going to happen when I get to the shelf that you're perched on, uh, but I say we cross that bridge when we come to it. It should be in three shelves and we have S in the middle, so maybe sooner than I think. If you haven't already watched my decluttering video, feel free to go and do that now. I don't know when it went up, but recently, and you should go and see it. So let's, without further ado, let's start with the sh shelf stacking supreme show. Self stacking supreme show. First book on the shelf. After that, I am going to talk about my Kirsten White problem. This isn't even all of them because I have the Guinevere Deception. I got an arc. The, well, it's not an arc, it's a finished copy of the Guinevere Deception, and that's on my TBR. My TBR I keep separately. Fun fact, but yes. All of my Kirsten White. I think Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein is my favourite aesthetically. I think because I don't own the hardbacks of these, which doesn't really bother me, but I do, thanks to the lovely Asher over at a cat a book and a cup of tea, I do now own all three of the Conqueror Sabia, so that's good. What order am I gonna put these in? Let's do publishing order. So I wasn't sure about mixing hardbacks and paperbacks, but looking at it, I actually quite like it. It gives it more levels, I think. Next we have Lainey Taylor, who I think is the only T author I have, unless I discover a pile of them in a minute, which in is entirely plausible in this mess. Um, I didn't own these for the longest time, I just had them on Kindle, and then I got them for Christmas last year from my lovely, lovely in-laws. Uh, and yeah, uh, now they're gonna live on my shelf. Again, they're gonna go in publishing order because I also have Lovely sprayed edges. Muse of what are these called? Strange the Dreamer series. I'm actually sure what this series is called. Editing me. Put it on the screen. Again, it looks really nice. Why didn't I do this before? I'm gonna find out why I didn't do this before at some point in this series. I now have to obtain all the S books and alphabetize them. So I'm gonna be a hot minute. At some point I need to go through and do like a tick box of which of these I should which of these by these I mean the Edge Chronicles. Um I need to repurchase. Yes! Uh, I talked about this in my previous video, the sequel to 101 Dalmatians that nobody knew they needed, but they do need it in their lives. Now we're looking at Samantha Shannon uh, special ones. I said I would pull them out. Uh, this is the Goldthor edition of Pride of the Orange Tree. It looks like it's gloss. Uh, it's actually they put like a PVC cover over the dust jacket, which I really appreciate because I am the kind of person who just destroys dust jackets, as you'll see throughout this video. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to keep on my shelf, and the other one is going to go in an undisclosed location as yet undecided. Uh, but yes, it has orange sprayed edges. I think it's signed? Let me check. Yes, it is signed. 22nd of February 2019, and it has like- oh, See, this is the thing. I never look at these things because um, I just want to read them. But this was 130 of 500, uh, and it has like, I, you won't be able to see it, but it's like a little embossed stamp. That's really cool. Um, I'm going to have to check if my other exclusive editions have this. I only own two, three technically, Goldsboro editions of things, and hopefully this one will fit really nicely in the gap at the end of the shelf. We have done one shelf. It looks really good. And there's probably space for another book to slot in, which is exactly what we want, because the good bit section has to go there. This is interesting, because I got it for a pound in Poundland. Hardback copy of The Bone Season. Uh, when was this edition printed? I think this might be the second printing of the hardback. Hard to know. But yes, there you go. I don't own the hardback of the Mime Order, so these are going to have to sit looking a little bit odd. But life is too short to care about things like that. The real question is... Yeah, no, okay. 
now we need to do a little bit of adjusting of shelf because uh, those are too tall to fit in there. This is the problem with housing hardbacks and paperbacks is that paperbacks are a bit shorter. I just did the opposite of what I meant to do and I put them down instead of up. Oh, actual idiot. Oh, then we have all of the Schwab. Okay, no we don't. This is uh, an art that was sent to me. It was like the first bit of unsolicited book post I ever got and I still can't believe it's this. And I still don't know how they got my address. Uh, but this is The Beast's Heart. The actual cover of this is very beautiful. I wish they'd done something like this because purple is my favourite colour. Uh, but this was... Uh, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I've got a review of it on my blog if you want to check that out. Uh, this was the re-release of her book The Near Witch. Uh, it was alright. I'm keeping it mostly because I think a reread will help settle it in my mind. Then we have City of Ghosts, which is her middle grade, which I bought the hardback of because I linked the cover. It has a cat on it. Yes. And then let's do the re-release of The Dark Vault, which is her Unbound, the Archive series. It's the Archive and the Unbound into one. Enjoy that. It can go there. Then we'll do her YA duology, which is like music, demons, monsters. I remember it being good. I'm going to reread it at some stage. Uh, I just found the other S's. They were behind me. I did not advertise them. Can we slot in? Yes, they can. I left that gap. It was it was clairvoyance, Tangleweed and Brian Sullivan. So these, uh, okay, right. We're gonna do a wee bit of rearranging, cause we have Emily Suvada and Neil Schusterman who need to go before and after various things. So you're probably picking all of this noise of me shuffling things, aren't you? I didn't think that through. Never mind. It's all right. We solved it. The problem is solved. It all fits fine. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. We went to Salisbury Books. And this one is a bit complicated because I don't want to keep doubles of things like this, but this is just something with a book plate. This is personalised and um, and they're both really pretty. And I like the hardback. But then this one will match this. Am I just keeping these for sentimental value? Is this the best way to clear my shelves out? No. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to keep them both because I think that the covers are absolutely beautiful. And it's my shelf. And I can do what I want. Uh, I also need to obtain, I'm hoping I'll find it in a cherry shop secondhand, but the actual first book, The Sin Eater's Daughter, because I've owned these two for a long time and they are both signed. So yes, I just need to obtain the first one. In that I didn't put all of the Schwab on. Oh, I'm just having a bit of a, a, bit of a brain day, really. Um, special editions, uh, American special edition of the first one, UK special editions of the second and the third. <laughs> Never mind. Do they fit? Will you fit? Will they, won't they, on a boat? Oh, that looks very nice. A bizarre number of authors that I read names start with, last names start with S. And lastly, we have two of my Brandon Sanderson's. I know I'm going to have more of these when I eventually get them off my TBR, but that is a problem for the future. Um, I'm going to pop these. Oh, this is a sprayed edge edition. I think this was the very late edition. Fun fact, at one point we had three copies of Skyward in the house because I was giving one to my brother for Christmas. I was keeping one uh, and I had one that I'd been sent for free for review. So <laughs> at one point we did have quite a lot of Skyward in the house, but we don't anymore. I have to pause now because as I said before, I need to move the shelf that you are on up and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to then film this, so bear with. Slight like change of plan. Uh, I actually can't move the shelf above this. I didn't realise there was one shelf that was permanently affixed, presumably to stop the bookshelf from collapsing. So you're going to stay where you are, and this shelf is going to be for accoutrement, and that's fine. Uh, it does mean we have to split the S's up and put Brandon Sanderson up here. I still have to move the shelf. Just so glamorous and graceful. I'm also beginning to feel like I shouldn't have worn tights for this. It's a lot of crawling around on the floor. In R, we have obviously JK Rowling. I don't talk about Harry Potter much on this channel because I don't want to support JK Rowling in the way that she is now, uh, but I don't think we can deny that Harry Potter is part of our lives. And I do want to reread the books, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but our editions are split. I think these are Katie's, my wife's old copies. So we have very ratty paperbacks, but I kind of love that. I think that people with pristine Harry Potter collections, good for you, but these were the ones we grew up with and 
Yeah, I like it. We do also have, as I said in previous videos, the illustrated editions. I'm gonna find a different place for those because they're way too big to go on the shelf, especially the thinner walled shelf. So let's put all the Harry Potters up. Sidebar, because I think it's an interesting question. Which is your favorite Harry Potter book of all of them? Uh, there is a correct answer and I will let you know in the comments below. They do look nice together. They've not been together for ages because I had my hard back split out. Uh, they do look nice together, I like that. Next we have Name of the Wind, Wise Man's Fear. Fun fact about Name of the Wind, uh, when I used to do Fairy Chat, which is the Twitter chat that Fairy they do, I won one of their giveaways that they do as part of those. And this was the book I chose from, I think, Book Depository. This is the Fairy Loot edition of Sorcerer of Thorns, which I've talked about before, but the glitter comes off on your fingers from the sprayed edges. But it is pretty. Uh, this is Along Came the Flood, which is a collection of sorts by Lacey Roop. This is poetry. Um, I fell in love with this poet. Oh, look, there's even a bookmark in it. Uh, put that to one side. Um, I fell in love with this collection of poetry because I fell in love with her online and this is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I have a copy of the other poetry book I own is The Madness Files, which I've currently lent to a friend, um, which is Andrea Gibson. Both of them amazing. Night Flights, which I kept. And These Rebel Waves, which is another fairy loot. Spray Judges. Um, I feel like at one point spread edges were like really revolutionary and now it's kind of like, oh, it's got spread edges. I don't know. Maybe because people learn to do them themselves. Right, we've got to R and we're already most of the way up my first book tell. So this doesn't move well, but I do know they all fit because they fit before and I've got rid of some. So nothing can go drastically wrong, surely. I do have a dream of owning all of the Terry Pratchett books in these editions because I, I think they are just absolutely stunning. This is The Hogfather which is one of our favourites. This is actually one of the few Katie books that it technically has I'm keeping on these shelves. Um, so we own Hogfather. This is actually my mother's copy of Thud that I need to give back to her but keep on my shelf because I enjoy rereading it. Maybe I'll buy her a new copy of Thud. That probably would be the nicest thing to do because I've definitely scuffed the corners of this one a bit. Uh, going Postal, which is my, probably the one I recommend to start with if you're looking for a Discworld starter. And then we have Good Omens, which obviously, Good Omens I really do need to reread, especially since the adaptation came out. Because I didn't like it the first time I read it, and I think maybe with the adaptation to kind of explain the bits that I drifted out in, um, it would be okay. So let's pop these up. I should shuffle back to the top of my head's in frame, but then I'm further away from what I'm actually doing, so forgive me for that. Sweet Black Waves. Oof, why am I just showing you this bit? Sweet Black Waves and Wild Savage Stars. Christina Perez. Good books. Uh, going up on the shelf. Now we're at, which I've said I've talked about in the previous video, we're at my Inheritance Cycle Collection. These, you can tell, are quite well loved. Um, <laughs> except for Inheritance, which I've had the longest and mostly listened to an audiobook. I know people are a bit split on these. There are diehard fans of the Inheritance Cycle, and there are people who quite rightly acknowledge that a lot of it is plagiarised. Um, allegedly. I feel like I should say allegedly. No one's gonna sue me. For me, these were my first, like, epic, long, chunky fantasy books I ever got into. This copy of Aragon, I purchased in like a massive book haul. My mum basically let me loose in a bookshop and was like, get what you want. And this was one of the things I wanted. It took me ages to get into because it takes until like, here for anything to happen. But when I did read it, I was like hooked. And then my terrible boyfriend at the time read them as well. Uh, and I was like powering through. I remember when Inheritance came out, I was so excited and got to the ending and I was like, mm -hmm, okay, not to spoil anything. So while fully acknowledging all that is terrible and potentially wrong with them and that they are not the best example of genre, I think we all have that like first book that got us into a thing. And when you've not read anything else, you don't know any different. Uh, and these are my that and I do intend to reread them. I, I have listened to audiobooks for some of them a few times and enjoyed them and I'm allowed to like things. I don't have to caveat them all the time. They're so heavy. My whole shelf was just like, oh, please don't that hurts. So I did also buy Fork Witch and the Worm um, because I really want to know what happens with some of these characters that was left unexplained in the last book. I currently apparently only have one O book and it is Heartstopper Volume 1. I do also own Heartstopper Volume 2. It is lent out to a friend. Well, you know what? We might get to halfway on one shelf. I think that would be good. Maybe. Uh, this is special to me because this was one of the first few. I'll come to the other one later if I've kept it. I think I've kept it. 
books that Justina, I should read that, sent me out of the kindness of her heart when she was a much more influential slash received more copies of things than I did. Um, she sent me a copy of Spinning Silver and I was so, so excited about it. Uh, so I keep this because I love it. And also we have Uprooted, which I've talked about in a previous video. It's one of my favourite comfort books. Uh, Angel Mage, which I've talked about recently, was sent to me for a blog tour. And Girls of Paper and Fire. This is the very late edition. It has braid edges. It is... It is signed. Some of these have book plates in, uh, but this one is signed in gold pen. Um, I might have to get a copy of Girls of Storm and Shadow so that I can sit them next to each other, but maybe I don't care that much. I don't know. I suppose that's part of the fun of this exercise, is you can kind of see what you're missing as well. Night Circus, uh, one of my favourite books sentimentally, because this was one of the books that Asha at Cat Book Tea recommended to me, to me, and I purchased it when she was working at Blackwells, and it was just as good as she said it would be, so I hang on to this because it's a lovely symbol of our friendship. I talked about this in my Spooky Reads video. I talked about this in my Galang's first video, I think. Ark of Renegades and a copy of Cinder. I own the rest of these on Kindle because I didn't feel the need to buy them all. But now I don't want to buy it on Kindle so that I have all of them on Kindle because I own this one already. It's... <sighs> the way my brain works is super unhelpful all the time. This is just beautiful. I absolutely love this cover. Um, I really need to reread this and I need to reread her other book as well. Uh, and then I kind of wish I'd bought Rain of the Fallen in hardback. Uh, a big part of me wishes that, but I own it on Kindle and I don't want to own duplicates of things. Maybe that's a Christmas list option. Own a hard copy of it? Maybe. Mm. Oh no, wait, we have more M's. The shelf feels incredibly precarious, but it is fine. I promise it's fine. We've got all the M's. L. L is another letter. I have a lot of L's. I know I'm going to have to put that enormous book next to it at some point, assuming I ever finish the name of all things. But for now, this can just go up. I'm gonna do a few and then we'll get into it. I'm gonna have to just crouch so that I can get up to the top shelf without screwing my knees over. Daughter of the Pirate King, Daughter of the Siren Queen. Really, really good YA pirate books. Uh, deserved the hype they got when they came out. No one really talks about them anymore, so maybe they need a resurgence. Here we have Jade City and Jade War, some of my favorites. Beyond a Dark and Shore, going on my reread list because I couldn't remember anything about it. See, this is the one. This isn't going to fit up there. I already know it. So do I put this sideways and maybe put these on? I'm going to have to do some some geometry there. Uh, and then Fallible Justice Proof. Uh, it's a good book. Read it. It's a good book. I got those in. Uh, there is a lot of space left on that shelf. I had to put them on their side in the end because Holy Sister just wasn't going to fit. Um, but I think I'm now going to move over to my second shelf and start filling that because this has a lot of room to grow in it which is exactly what I want so we've got up to L in one shelf which is exactly what we want let's get on to what's up to L? K oh dear oh dear oh dear big arc of the Dragon Republic I don't own the Poppy War I should own the Poppy War I have it on my Kindle again this is the problem with me buying things on Kindle is I end up being like but I need them in all hard copy or not all hard copy it's just a pain, really, isn't it? Good, good, good book. Talked about that recently. Shiny, shiny. Uh, this is a very new edition of Curse So Dark and Lonely that is signed with like this rose-shaped book plate, which I thought was nice. The only J's I have are Josie Jeffrey. This copy of Vine Fair was from the Fairy Box. Oh, so shiny. This was the most silly thing. They were like, it's an exclusive edition. It's like slightly purple where the other one is slightly navy. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the books in that series. I think they're going to be a, amazing, and B, beautiful. Um, B, beautiful. <laughs> 10 thousand dollars of January, this book's beautiful. Um, need to reread. Need to reread. This is the one Joanne Harris book I've kept, despite having at one point owned, I think, three. Um, not because I don't like her writing, but she just doesn't inspire me to want to read her books again. Lovely lady, though. Very, very nice. These are my three Francis Harding books. I do want to own more of them. I might buy a finished copy of Deep Light. I haven't quite decided um, because it is going to be absolutely stunning and it is one of my favourite books of the year. Maybe I'll treat myself. Christmas list. All of these things I keep being like, maybe I'll buy it. I can't afford to buy it. It's going on the Christmas list. Um, these are the Rebel of the Sands trilogy by Alwyn Hamilton. In case you didn't know, we're going to have to start speeding up if I'm going to get through this. I've talked about this before. Good book. Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. I've talked about this before. Great book. Such nostalgia. Wow. 
our Neil Gaiman collection. Uh, I think I've talked about this before on a vlog and I misgendered the author who's actually non-binary, I believe. Yes, non-binary. Uh, don't read that blog post until I fix it. This book is absolutely lovely. I really need to reread this. I read it, it was one of those read it on the day you buy it things, which I think is great because it means it doesn't add to your TBR, but it does sometimes mean you don't get as much out of it because you haven't had the time to ruminate. Uh, this I have reread recently and it got destroyed by my bath. I told you I suck at keeping dust jackets clean. Uh, this was, was this an Illumicrate debut box? Yes, I can't think where else. This was from the Illumicrate debut box for We Hunt the Flame. Very, very, very good. I like the Little Crit stuff. I think they do a great job. The Cerulean, which I purchased purely because I think the cover is beautiful, and I read and kept purely because the cover is beautiful, because the book is actually a bit silly. I think there's a place for silly bad. Not bad. Uh, less than exceptional YA in our lives, so I'm keeping hold of that. The Graces was a Christmas present, and I really didn't like the sequel to this, but The Seafarer's Kiss itself is a lovely 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 bi mermaid book. One day I'll go through and pull all the books off that have queer rep and just like revel in it. Lie in it like a big pile of gay. Finish this this month. So so good if you want to read non-fiction. Smoke gets in your eyes. It's phenomenal. I finally have all of these. I can't believe how long it took me. Um, they are in different editions but that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, I will, <laughs> when I've finished read it I will only own two of these in hardback which may end up with me getting rid of them because it'll be a bit weird to have book I think this is book four and, and I'll have book six, maybe? It's either that or three and five. Uh, so it'd be a bit odd, but that was uh, from a hockey event, which was lovely. This was a fairy loop book. I think the original cover is teal, which actually I think I would have liked more, uh, but we don't we don't want to buy lots of copies of the same book. And then Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, I would like to buy the other books in that series. Oh, we're doing so well. We're actually gonna, I don't want to jinx it, but I think I'm gonna have like a lot of spare space. A new crate edition of the Orphanage of Gods. Very pretty spare edges. Wasn't entirely sold on the book, but I think a reread will either cement it as a keep or make it a get rid of. Film adaptation, not film adaptation, the BBC adaptation cover. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Not my favourite cover, but I think I got this in the charity shop. Keeping both of these wasn't going to. Ended up deciding that I would. The I Ixari series? Ixara? I've got to the point where I can't do it from sat down anymore. You all know this is one of my favourites. Uh, Ditto, really enjoyed that. Good kind of uh, urban fantasy, I guess. I don't know the names of all the subgenres. Then we have the Becky Chambers pile, which they don't all match. And that's absolutely fine, because if Becky Chambers taught us anything, it's that everyone should just be accepted together. Uh, another book I recently got back, Raw by Cora Carmack. Uh, this is one of the few like white, Naked hardbacks I own, I think. Um, most of them are black or navy. Fairy loot edition, again, I think. Before fairy loot started making spray edges for every single one. That is all of the C's. Fairy loot edition of The Beholder. Little pink spray edges. I actually like this colour pink. Wish the book had been better. One of my favourite books of this year. A Christmas gift from a previous year that never fits on the shelf because it's oversized. Uh, which is another reason I'm glad I'm mixing it in with my hardbacks now. Another one of my favourite books of this year, B, had just had a great year this year. All of the Lee Bardugo! Six of Crows special editions. Maybe these could go on the display shelf. We'll have a think. King of Scars and... Ooh, something fell out. <gasps> it's my Dark Dawn bookmark! I found it when Mr. Kindly holds your page. Yes. This book is very special to me because it's like a body positive archaeology book and it's just lovely and it's YA Contemporary which I've not kept much else YA, YA Contemporary on my shelf but this I have. Yes, yes, yes. I am obviously putting these up. Um, Catherine Arden's Winter of the Witch. Not Winter of the Witch. Fair in the Nightingale. I can't remember what this series is called. Again, Editing Judith. Stick that on. Um, Winter Night. Editing Judith. Stop. It's Winter Night Trilogy. Children of Blood and Bone which is the first thing that Justine ever sent me. Uh, I should read that. And um, I've kept the press release in it and everything because it was like the beginning of us becoming friends and now we're really close and that's really, really nice. Welcome to the madness. I'm really excited to show you what these shelves look like, but to find out, you're going to have to watch my next video in this series, which is editing Judith Put in the Punch. Uh, it is going to be me redoing my reread star. Uh, while you're waiting with bated breath for that footage, um, you can like this video, you can subscribe, you can share, all of those things really help me out. You can follow me on all of my socials, and I will see you in the next one.